All right, well, it is after three, so I want to be mindful of everyone's time. My name is Shelly Reed. I am here at LSNTAP, the Legal Services National Technology Assistance Project, and I want to welcome you all today. I appreciate you coming to join us for this webinar on uh, migrating from Google Analytics to Google Analytics 4. And I'm going to be turning this uh, webinar over to our friends from Urban Insight, Matthew and Molly. I'm going to let them introduce themselves and then just fill your brains with knowledge about everything <laughs> GA4. Perfect. So, welcome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Shelly. And welcome, everybody. Um, I'll just share my screen now since introductions are on the agenda officially. Um, I'm Molly Reed. I'm a digital project manager with Urban Insight. Um, and oh, Matthew, do you want to give, introduce yourself? And then I'll... Uh, yeah, I'm Matthew Lawson. I am a web engineer at uh, Urban Insight. Perfect. And just for a little bit of background, I see a couple of familiar names um, on the Zoom. So always glad to connect with you again and happy to meet more people. But Urban Insight is a digital design and development agency. We're based out of Los Angeles, but I'm in Virginia. We're um, remote, so all over the place. And we are really happy to be partners with a lot of legal aid organizations um, on website efforts and a couple of other products that we have developed and now maintain. Our main product is called DLAW or Drupal for Legal Aid Websites. It is a custom built CMS in Drupal that is open source. Um, so you can find more about that at openadvocate.org. Um, and we also host a number of organizations using DLAW where Urban Insight also serves as their development arm. And that's kind of what our open advocate um program is so that's kind of how we got involved in the legal aid world we built DLAW about 10 years ago and have been evolving it with partnerships with different organizations ever since um and so we recently went under went through a massive upgrade for DLAW and a redesign and that coincided with moving all of our DLAW sites onto Google Analytics 4 um and so then when we were speaking with Shelly and just talking about some of the other open questions that she had been hearing from the legal aid organizations that she's working with. Uh, it sounded like GA4 was one of with a lot of interest. So we were happy to uh, to jump into this webinar and hopefully can provide a little bit of background information um, and proactively answer questions. Thanks to everybody who did send in questions ahead of time also. Um, so yeah, I think, I'm going to hand it over to Matthew in a minute to kind of give a, a overview of the of a migration, and then we were going to walk through the questions that came in, since a lot of them probably speak to questions that a lot of people have. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about what to do with the data you already have in your Google Analytics, um, and then can answer any other questions. This presentation has a lot of links in it as well to articles that Matthew had highlighted that would be particularly helpful or answer any really specific questions. So I'll be sure to coordinate with Shelly sharing this um, around after so that you have access to like all of the specific links too. Mm -hmm. oh, did that already? Uh, so before I hand it over Matthew, just kind of important dates to keep in mind. Uh, UA stands for Universal Analytics, which you'll see a couple of times through this presentation. That is just the current implementation of your Google Analytics. They call it Universal Analytics. So on July 1st, that will stop working. Um, basically, the data in that dashboard will stop. And so that's kind of the cutoff date for making the switch to Google Analytics 4 or having that set up. And then um, in December 1st of this year, the historical data that your UA analytics has collected up until July will also disappear. So that's kind of the second portion of this site of this presentation of how to preserve that data if you're going to want it moving forward for reference or anything like that. So um, Matthew, I can do you want me to keep this slide up while you start talking or do you want to take over with a screen share? Uh, sure, you can leave this up for a second. So okay. um, I, I think the December 1st date right now is currently like when they're going to shut it off but there's some hints that they might extend it a little bit further um but again like what molly has right here this is how we should be operating this is sort of uh the information will be gone at that point unless we receive an update from google indicating otherwise 
Um, so for getting started, I mean, the first thing is setting up a new GA4 account. Uh, you would do this by visiting analytics.google.com and uh, basically creating a new account or creating a new property that would be GA4. And we recommend doing this in advance so that you can connect your universal analytics property uh, to your GA4 property. Um, and if it's helpful, I can actually uh, start sharing my screen right now. Let's see if I can fire this up here. Okay. All right. So uh, is everyone seeing my screen okay? Yes. Okay. So here I am in my GA4 instance. And I click down here the little cog by admin so that I can go to my uh, property settings. And here we see our setup assistant. So this is, I've already connected it with my uh, universal analytics account. And you can see here that we have uh, some property settings that are set up and we're actually able to uh, import some of this stuff from universal analytics into your GA4 accounts. Now with GA4, you can kind of think of it as more of a lateral move to a new service rather than a direct upgrade of an existing service but pretty much all the features are gonna be very similar and they are doing their best to sort of have these one-to-one -one relationships on, uh, on both of these services with GA4 and Universal Analytics. But setting this up, connecting your property will then give you access to import your conversions, uh, import like audience definitions, as well as like your administrative users that like manage the dashboard. Um, if any of you have already had a chance to hop into GA4, you'll notice um, that sort of reports and uh, explorations as they're now set up are ways of managing all this information um, and sort of like mapping out this stuff, like plotting all your information and uh, valuable like reports to sort of better understand the data and better understand your web traffic. Uh, so the other thing, here we go. Uh, we also recommend um, using the Google Tag Manager for implementing uh, GA4. And I have this demo that's set up right here. I also have a few of these like link tags, or sorry, yeah, I have a few of these tags that are also set up. Um, but the main one that you need to be concerned with is just your GA4 config tag. So the way that this is this would work is you're able to add these tags, add uh, these other sort of tracking tags to your website just via the Google Tag Manager interface. So every time you're adding a new tracker, you don't need to touch any website code. The only instance that you would um, touch the website code is to add the Google Tag Manager uh, tracking snippet to the website. Here we go. And again, you're able to send um, all your events over. Uh, for, for this demo, I'm using a WordPress website and I'm just gonna showcase like a form submission, um, form pagination on a multi-page form. And I also added uh, PDF link clicks as well as uh, PDF non-left click. So if someone were to right click and open it up in a new tab, we would also wanna register that as them interacting with, uh, with a PDF. Matthew, can you talk a little bit just while we're looking at this about Google Tag Manager, like how that's different um, than the other implementations? I know there's major benefits of not having to touch the code after it's after it's set up, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for this, one of the coolest things is adding tags, and there are a lot of um, sort of ready-made tag options, as you can see from this list. I mean, these are a whole bunch of different uh, services, Google, as well as third-party services. Um, I think there's also even recipes where you can pull in uh, new stuff that's not uh, just listed here. Here we go. But yeah, there's a whole community template gallery. So I think, is it like Facebook? I know there was one where we use this to include like a Facebook pixel, and this sort of allowed us to... Uh, you see here if we have that. Yeah, there we go. So again, like a, a really easy way of implementing new tracking code on the website uh, without touching code itself, because all of this is being included in our Google Tag Manager. And once you add that initial snippet to your website for Google Tag Manager, everything else is going to be included. Everything else is going to be included within this container. So in addition to tags, we also have triggering. Um, if we take a look at this guy, our config tag is going to be firing on all pages. So every time there's a new page view, it's going to kick up our uh, GA4 
tag, as well as um, check for any events that might be firing. And events are basically just information that's being pushed uh, to the data layer. And we can uh, take a look at that really quick. Uh, was there anything else we wanted to, oh, oh, uh, the one other really cool thing is as you're making changes uh, to your Google Tag Manager container, if you're adding a new tracker or something and you wanna test it out before deploying it to your live website, they offer a preview mode, which is really handy. So for right here, um, I've just hit preview. I'm able to add the URL from the website that I'm looking to test uh, data on this particular page. So I'll go ahead and hit connect. It's gonna throw open a new page right here. Perfect. And as long as I have this page open, we see I have my little Google tag icon. We have our flashing uh, little tag icon from the tag assistant. So we're able to view uh, tags that are firing on the website, as well as sort of a list of all the events that are occurring. So if I go back here and let's say I try out my download PDF, I've just opened that in a new window. My uh, custom event that I've added right here, I can see the information has been uh, set up right there. So if I can open this up, I'm able to see some of these attributes that I've added in my uh, Google Tag Manager the uh, link href, uh, also just the text on this. And, and a lot of this can be added um, if it's like a module for Drupal or a plugin for WordPress or custom code. Uh, you're effectively just pushing information up to the data layer with this event. So there's a question that we just got sent, Matthew, of do we need to manually set up tags, including the config tag, or is that or any of them automated, or we'll have to manually set them? Right. So you would need to manually set up uh, this tag in Google Tag Manager. And it, I mean, I say manually, but a lot of this stuff is, you know, uh, ready made for you. So if you um, go and let's just say I wanted to create like another one, I already have it here, my GA4 config tag. But if I wanted to create a new one, I would click on here. I have my GA4 configuration and then I'm including my measurement ID. Uh, also in Google Tag Manager, you have variables. And I can reference uh, a current variable right here so that if I'm if I have several tags that are all referencing, uh, you know, Google measurement ID, I can go ahead and use a variable. And that way, if I'm moving this to another environment, if I'm moving this to another uh, website, I can go ahead and just change that variable and it'll make that update in all the places that that variable is being used. So this is really helpful. And then for triggering. We want to have this fire on every page. So right here in these few clicks, you know, GA4 test tag, you would just hit save and then you're off to the races. So after installing Google Tag Manager on your website and adding this tag and then this trigger, you would be uh, you you would then be sending information over to GA4. So I'll go ahead and close right. up this one since I already. So they it. will they would need to place the tag, but not but the tag itself exists and will work once it's once they place it in their tag manager kind of thing correct so you would place it in your tag manager then you could either do preview just to ensure that it's it's sending the standard default information um, and then you would hit submit and submit is going to allow you to publish uh, the changes that you've made in your workspace and it also allows you to have um, several versions of the work that you've been doing. So if you're trying something out and you want to roll back to a previous iteration of uh, updates that you made to this container, you can do that really quickly. And that's just publishing these previous versions, which is going to be helpful. Uh, the other great thing is in the admin, you're able to export containers and import containers. So if you're managing multiple websites, you want to set this up once you can then export the com, uh, container for one website and then import it into another site's container. And then, like we said, change a variable to update those measurement IDs. Uh, so again, it just makes it really easy to use. And when you're exporting, you can indicate uh, the workspace that you wanna select from, as well as these individual items. So these might be variables, these might be tags, or these might be triggers that you wanna include. Uh, but it just sort of, again, it feels like it's really scalable and it makes it easier for individuals who don't have access to website code to implement like tracking scripts. So this is sort of like an ideal uh, for marketers. Okay. Here we go. And, and just to say, uh, while we're running through this as well, if you wanna start testing out uh, some of this stuff, when you're in the preview mode, like our, our debug mode here, 
having clicked preview and gone into the tag assistant, we're getting our information here. And this is all sort of from Google Tag Manager. On the other side, we can take a look in GA4 at their new debug view, which is really cool. So let's go check it out. So when I pop in here, I'm gonna be able to see information that's being sent through the data layer. And let's go ahead and do this. So here we see my previous PDF download event that I've set up here. And within that, we can see some of those same parameters, like our link text and like the link URL that we were reviewing before, as well as like page location, page refer on here. Uh, so again, this is great if you have custom events that are data rich, they have a bunch of parameters and properties with them. So as I go to this website, just one more time. There we go, one more click. When I go back over here, I can see I have some more new events popping in. There we go. Oop, as they're feeding in. And there's always like a little bit of like lag time. Like it says real time, but it might be some time that you'll get this stuff. So honestly, if it takes anywhere from like 15 to 30 seconds, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of normal. That's to be expected. Uh, but again, we see I have this PDF download event that I created. And again, we have all the parameters. So just a great debugging tool that you can use in tandem with the Google Tag Manager preview uh, for debugging. Um, and if it's okay, I'll do one more quick little demo here with this multi-page form that I've created so that we can demonstrate uh, both the form pagination event as well as the form submission events. So if I go ahead and grab my favorite color, blue. There we go, favorite pet, pet rock, sure. <laughs> There we go. Favorite book. There we go. The time machine. Okay. So before I submit this, let's just hop back over to Google Analytics to see some more of this stuff that's popping in. And it, and it, it tries to pause um, this little like scroller just so that you're not kind of losing your place, which is helpful, but also a little bit annoying sometimes. Um, so you see right here, I have this GF track event. This is being generated by our Gravity Forms plugin add-on. And this is being used to track, here we go, our pagination. So here, um, when this information is being transmitted, uh, we're just including the title of our form and then we're including the source page and then the destination page. But really this information can be whatever is appropriate for the form or uh, a situation that you have. So finally, I'll go ahead and hit submit. Here we go. And when we pop back over here, we're going to see one more GF track event roll in. And that one is going to have an event label uh, that's going to be set up. Here we go. Come on, guys, bring it in. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that label is going to be indicating the form submission. So again, I've sort of mapped this to just show the name of the form, and then the ID of the form. Uh, but again, this was sort of provided through the uh, the plugin information. And this is all related to our GF track event. Um, and to just sort of bounce back to Google Tag Manager and just show that off really quick. There we go. We see right here, I have this event name, which is G uh, G uh, GF track event. And this is, again, being transmitted from the website. So this originates with the website. And within that data layer push, we see all these items where I'm able to create uh, these data layer variables. So if I need to reuse them. And again, we see the event label was our track label. And if I hop over to our variables really quick, just to show you the track label. This was being set up as a data layer variable. And again, like when I'm clicking the stuff, variable types, you just get a whole list of items to sort of you know customize these things. So for a data layer variable, go. And there's the variable name. Nice. Oh, there we go. Okay. And again, you can see that this is being used. Um, we're also using uh, analytics, our regular universal analytics and GA4. So we're transmitting to both services from the site. And again, this is another reason why I'm a real big fan of uh, Google Tag Manager. You're actually able, so let's say we get to a point 
where we want to turn off universal analytics. Like we're approaching the time they're no longer processing data. We don't need to have um, these tags on our website anymore. It really is as simple as uh, selecting these two low items right here. So these are both legacy. I've even organized them into folders. If you have a lot of tags, if you have a lot of variables, this makes things a little bit easier to manage. Um, especially if you want to like turn stuff off or pause tags, we can do that right now and I'll show you. So I'm just turning off these two universal legacy ones and I can just hit um, pause on here. So now I've made a change. So if I go to my overview, I see that I've made these two workspace changes by pausing these tags and I would follow the same process where I can, if I want to preview at the same time, I haven't really changed anything. So I could go ahead and just uh, submit and publish these changes. And then the data from the website is no longer going to be going into universal analytics, but these tags are still here. If I needed to unpause them or reactivate them for any reason. There we go. So what else are we uh, are we thinking here? Um, we can switch over in a minute to the pre-submitted questions. Another live question just came in though. In terms of level of tracking, is there a way to track like the street address of a user, or does it kind of stop at IP address or level? What level of detail can we get on a user visiting the site that you know of? Right. So I don't think a uh, street address, unless that is custom, like unless that's a custom dimension that's being sent over from the website. Um, so I think by default, let me hop back into the, the view here. Um, I think by default, it might be like locality or region, which is effectively like a city, um, like administrative area. Let me see if I can take a look here. Um, I'm trying to whip this up. So yeah, for this guy, I, yeah, I think we might be limited, um, to city from this point. I don't see. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can get any more refined yeah, than that by default. Mm -hmm. um, but again, very similar to like how events are being sent over. If you are transmitting that information, if you are registering that street address and then sending that over to GA4, you could create a custom dimension um, to have that. The only issue that might come up is if you have a custom dimension that has a whole bunch of unique values. Uh, that could affect performance. So you, you might need to uh, pick and choose some of those. Um, I'm not sure if like a zip code would be like as valuable. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think if you're adding dimensions that have a whole bunch of unique values, uh, it may be worth reconsidering just again, if there's like a performance hit to some of these explorations that you could be uh, creating. Great. There we go. Uh, all right, so I think the one last thing that I can uh, show off here is um, this exploration that we've set up, and I set this up just as a freeform exploration, um, but it is robust, and you'll see in a second what we're talking about here. Um, so I've created these two custom dimensions. This is a form label and PDF click. And I'm not sure if I had enough time for the PDF click stuff to come in. So we can take a look at uh, this form activity. So right here, we have the form label. And you can see there's a number of events where that simply wasn't set. But on these instances where we were interacting with the form and we did have these events, uh, we can see the event count as well as the active users. And surprise, it's one, I'm the active user. <laughs> uh, but so again, you can kind of map this stuff out and uh, with visualizations, I mean, this is, there's a lot to it. There could be a whole other webinar just on explorations. Um, but I think in adding these dimensions and hopping in here and taking a look at like some of uh, the ready-made ones too, I, for, I mean, this is a new service. So we're going to be like learning a lot of stuff together as well as uh, setting up these like custom views. But for this example, I have two custom dimensions that I've created and you can add these uh, just by hitting that plus key. And so you see, you have all of these uh, predefined ones and there's whole sections that you can kind of pull in. And I think it's uh, worth it to everyone to maybe go through here and investigate 
um, these different dimensions and see which ones can be carried over from universal analytics before you start creating a whole bunch of uh, custom dimensions. So we have our all right here, we have our predefined, and then we have the two uh, that I created. And maybe just to showcase that really quick, and then I'll hand this all over uh, back to Molly. Custom definitions. So again, I'm in the uh, the admin cog. I'm going to my property, custom definitions, and then this is a custom uh, dimensions tab right here. And this is me referencing this event label that we saw that I was populating before for form submissions. It was including the form name and the form ID. Uh, and then for form pagination, it was including just like the form name and then the source page and then the destination page. But this is where you would add uh, custom dimensions as well as adding like custom metrics. There we go. And I, I think I've hit my list of, uh, of all the things. Uh, any, any other items that we want to touch on? Um, no other questions have come through. So, and I know we have time at the end, so we can always kind of pull this back up, but I think a lot of the pre submitted questions we'll kind of touch on will be a good follow-up to this also, maybe. So that's great. Perfect. All right. Well, if it's okay, I will hand the reins yeah, back over perfect. to you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Um, so now just getting into pre-submitted questions and some topics, um, feel free. I have the chat open as well. So if there are things that come to mind as you're listening, feel free to add questions there and I'll try and slate them in um, during, during the breaks in the slide or after this. But the first one was, what are some of the main differences between Google Analytics and GA4? I missed the A there. Um, and Matthew can certainly speak to this in more detail, but I think as he said, it's really more of a lateral move than a huge upgrade. Um, there are a few new features as that we looked at with those custom reports and views that we can make um, with some of that debugging, uh, the debugging view that we now have, ha have access to. But in terms of what's being measured, I don't think there's a huge um, difference between the two. I know that, uh, one one main difference that Matthew had noted was just about how events and dimensions are managed um, for as da data layers. But Matthew, are there any more details or beyond what we looked at as well that would be helpful for this point? Uh, I think the one other item was uh, bounce rates. I, I think that was one of the questions that yes. was asked. So originally when they first released this, uh, bounce rates weren't included. They've brought that back, um, but I think it's sort of handled a little bit differently. They're measuring it as the flip side of user engagement. So if you were to have, let's say, like a number of, you know, like 68 for user engagement out of, out of 100, your bounce rate would be the flip of that. So that would end up being like 32% bounce rate because you have a 68% engagement rate. So that might change how some of you are kind of managing or, or thinking about like bounce rates. But I mean, it seems to me like it's more of like a glass half full approach where we're focusing on the engagement versus <laughs> people leaving us. So it, I think overall, it might be a good move. Sure. That's a good point. Yeah, we have a bullet point with that question that can um, can show a little bit more of where to set this up with a link to that to that uh, tutorial as well. Um, what should website admins do to prepare for this change? So I think the biggest thing is just to line up the technical resources that you'll need. I know different teams have different um, roles on staff versus what have to be outsourced. So just identifying who will take on this work and what a timeline would be for it. The reason that we really are encouraging um, our clients and our and we took the work on early for our D law clients um, is just that you have that historical data that much sooner. We're running GA four concurrently with Universal Analytics right now across all of our sites, so that. When the universal analytics data does go away, we have GA4 data from a date that's just that much earlier. Um, and so really we feel like the sooner that it can get done, the better and more beneficial it will be the less headache of parsing through old data in a separate um, separate place or anything like that uh, is kind of the one of the biggest reasons. Um, the second thing I would do to prepare is just to treat this as an opportunity to look at 
what you're measuring right now and if it's what you need, if it's getting you the answers that you're looking for, if it's getting you uh, the data that you're frequently returning to. I know especially for, we work a lot with organizations using LSC TIGS grants. Um, and so they have very specific metrics that they report on every year for those grants. So we set up a custom dashboard for them to find that information in one glance. So is that the kind of data that would be helpful for your organization? Are you measuring it? Is it easy to find? It's really just a good chance to hit kind of take that step back and and look at it a little bit more holistically also. And then, of course, get it done as soon as possible uh, for that historical data piece of it. Um, setting custom dimensions. I know that <clears throat> we looked at it very briefly with Matthew about a couple of the custom dimensions he had set using those IDs. We'll have we have a couple of links in here. Um, for guides that we have found helpful. One is for just a post from Google, and then one is a pretty involved video that has um, been a really helpful resource. So Matthew, beyond those, that will get into a lot more detail. Any any overall guidelines? Yeah, I, I think honestly, what you were saying before, having both of these services running tandem so that you can evaluate both of them for the same traffic that's coming through the website, is going to be really helpful and will be uh, illuminating with like setting up custom dimensions and making sure that data is transmitting uh, both like as expected. Awesome. Any special knowledge or are we basically running a transition wizard type of system? So if I'm understanding this question correctly, um, we had said that if you don't have a lot of custom tracking um, right now with your universal analytics, then the GA4 setup assistance that is kind of a wizard that will walk you through it should be enough to kind of guide you step by step through setting it up and at least initially and then you could always add separate custom tracking on to your GA4 instance as well. Um, and then I think this speaks to what we've repeated a couple of times, but yes, we can have both running at the same time we actually encourage you to so. Um, hopefully and that to this question's point is also a good way to kind of QA your your GA4 to check that you're getting that similar data or the same data um, in both dashboards with through both implementations. If we do nothing, what happens? Does the conversion occur automatically? When I first answered this question, my, the answer was, uh, if you do nothing, you will stop getting analytics. But similar to the bounce rate development, I think Google has actually uh, taken some pity on, on the organizations using Google Analytics. And there's now, we discovered recently, under settings and admin, there's a little checkbox that says um, automatically set up a GA4 property if there isn't one set up when Universal Analytics gets sunsetted. So that's definitely a good backup plan. Um, if you go in today and check that, then if you do nothing, you at the very minimum have a Google Analytics 4 uh, property set up for your site for July 1st. Um, but just with the caveat that custom tracking and custom work that you have currently implemented won't get automatically migrated over. So still is worth either checking it after the fact and adding it back in or setting it up um, yourself ahead of time. All right, is Google providing support and assistance with the transition? So no, no direct assistance really where you can sign up for a service where they're helping or anything like that, but um, we don't use Google Analytics 360, their paid service, but we would believe, we would think that if you were using it, then there probably is a level of support through that. Again, they now also offer that automatic setup, um, which is a newer offering. So that's been great. And then just as you'll see through the links here and hopefully exploring them on your own after this call with the deck, um, that there are extensive documentation from Google and then from a lot of other resources as well that, um, has proven to be really helpful. So there's certainly resources out there, uh, not a ton coming from Google directly, I don't think. All right, I'd like a demo of how to pull data that we've become used to pulling in the existing Google Analytics. We're going to have to compare numbers from last year to this year and the reporting interface is very different. 
Um, so I think that last part of what Matthew showed gets into that a little bit for creating new reports and surfacing the information and data that you're going to be looking to compare to last year. Um, I think, Matthew, your suggestion in this was to connect that existing universal analytics account so that you can review any available custom reports. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think so. And um, I mean, it is a totally different interface for the explorations. Um, but if you're able to bring over like custom dimensions and basically the data points uh, that you have on universal analytics, you'll be in a good position to start working with the new interface and recreating those reports. And then what other metrics can web administrators use now that bounce rates are removed? Um, so that's the good news is that you can measure bounce rate now. So this link, uh, get, I can actually show it just so people can see, um, but it's set up via engagement rate now. So when you go in to customize the report under metrics, you'll now see engagement rate and bounce rate. Um, and you can apply those and then save that as a report so that you have an existing report that's an easy uh, reference for you to keep checking bounce rates over time. So that's the good news. Um, and I think hopefully that, I know a lot of web admins do use that. So hopefully that's an easy one to set up that you don't lose any of the functionality that you're currently getting from your, from your analytics. All right, we are right on time. Um, before we switch gears, I don't see any new questions, um, but if anyone has any, we'll also have time at the end. Or Matthew, any other kind of points to make related to the migration or reports? Uh, I, I would just say, again, starting sooner than later is going to be a benefit rather than like a last minute scramble. So I would just encourage everyone to create that GA4 property and uh, connect it with their universal analytics property ahead of time. Awesome. And I think to that end also, if you're experimenting with reports or custom um, tracking with your newer Google Analytics 4, it's okay if you mess things up or have to redo them while you're having universal analytics at the same time, because you'll still have kind of one source of truth that you can look at while you confirm that the GA4 setup is what you need and working as expected and things like that. So just another uh, point towards setting it up early, I think. So once you have GA4 set up, the second piece of it is how do you preserve legacy data um, again, there's a chance that it will be available in your dashboard beyond December 1st, but as of now, that's kind of the date that we're working with. Um, and obviously, if a site is many, many years old, that's a lot of data to lose. Um, and I know, again, for a lot of the reporting, it needs to be at least for the last year, if not further. So how do you save the data that you're going to need to look back on? So our Urban Insight team has done research into different methods and different um, options that exist. And we've identified kind of a two-part approach to what we recommend um, for anybody that's looking to preserve data. And I have a couple of examples um, from my teammates that did a lot of this research and, and kind of tested it out with a couple of different websites and their real-time data. Um, but yes, unfortunately, there is no standard solution. Um, there's nothing that Google is kind of providing as a way to say, don't worry, you can just click this and we'll download all of your data into massive files and you can have it forever. Um, and so there, but there is a Google Analytics plugin with Google Sheets that Google itself developed um, that can let, that lets you import historical data and you can identify which data and which stats that you want and it will get um, put into a spreadsheet. And then, and obviously that spreadsheet, depending on what you're saving can be still massive and still overwhelming. Um, so the second part of that approach is then using something called Google Data Studio, which just uh, ports all of that data into a much nicer and much easier to understand dashboard. And it looks actually like very similar to the current universal analytics dashboard that you have right now as well. So um, just a couple of notes about this, and then I'll kind of show the real time examples of this. Um, but yeah, it's the Google spreadsheet notes is developed by Google. So it's well established. Um, it'll connect to your account and your property. 
and even a view. And then you can, based on the reports that you're pulling, it creates kind of one tab in the spreadsheet per view. Um, it does walk you through it a little bit. I think it is. it does take a little bit of time to make sure you're creating the reports that you want to see. So um, their Dimensions and Metrics Explorer is definitely a helpful source for this. And again, all these links that we'll send them around. I see Shelly wrote that um, we'll post them uh, to the recording on the YouTube. So these will all be clickable and you can kind of explore them on your own time. Um, and here is a demo of what this looks like. So ignoring this blue uh, tab that kind of comes in later for the second part, part of it, but these are different reports that we ran from our current universal analytics um, dashboard with, we kind of um, marked that we wanted top pages within a certain time frame. We wanted to know device categories, um, page per session, all of that. So, you know, you can indicate X amount of, of reports that you want. Um, <clears throat> and it kind of dumps it all out like this. And again, having it look with a little bit nicer and easier to digest with the headers um, comes from that Google Dimensions and Metrics Explorer. So that's that's definitely the resource to be checking out when you're trying to set this up. But obviously, if, if you have one of these for every year or one of these for every 10 years, that's a lot of data to parse through if you're looking for a trend or if you're looking for something really specific. So um, that's where the Google, I'm going to forget what it's called, the Google Data Studio Notes, which is also called Looker Studio, comes in. Again, it's made by Google um, and it connects to your this spreadsheet. So that is what this blue tab is with the report configuration. Um, it'll help you kind of grab the different the data that the Looker dashboard needs. And then what it creates is this really nice uh, report. So this is all of that raw data put into a much nicer presentation. Um, and again, looks very similar probably to everybody that's familiar with the current Google Analytics dashboard. So you can drop down with the dates and still pick the dates that you want. It's all the visualizations that we're pretty used to. Uh, if it takes a minute to load, same thing, but you'll see it's just all of the all of those tabs of the report. It's all put into this dashboard now. So to kind of make it nice and easy to, to digest. You can set these up not for legacy data as well, just as an aside. Um, we have clients that ha get this sent to them monthly. It's set up where it takes all of the month's worth of analytics and puts it into a dashboard like this and gets emailed around to a certain group of people. So if it, if you find this helpful, some, just something to know. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the best way and least painful way we've found to, to take that data and, and put it into a place that you'll be able to reference it a little bit easier, hopefully. Um, the, other, the only other note that came from our team that had used this a lot was that every once in a while it gets glitchy. So just turn it off and turn it back on. All right. Um, we have a couple minutes. Are there any questions? I have the chat open, so feel free to send over any other questions or anything else, any other areas um, that we could get into a little bit more detail or, you know, pulling up Matthew's screen again would be helpful or anything like that. Give people a minute to type and then. Awesome. I think, oh, <laughs> yes. So hopefully it's not information overload and this recording uh, proves helpful to go back to. But um, I think that I'll add, before I share this, this deck with uh, Shelly, I'll also add my email to the end of it. I don't think that's in there now. So if anything comes up, feel free to let me know. Oh, here we go. Can you speak on BigQuery and the benefits or drawbacks of that for historical data? I am not personally familiar with BigQuery. Matthew, I don't know if you have any experience with that. No, not not so much. Okay, I can check with um, our team members who did the deeper dive into the 
into the options for preserving historical data and just see if they had looked at that as an option and if they had any any takeaways and um I'll and Kathleen sent that note so I can I can grab your information and, and follow up with you if they have any notes. Um, there's a couple of general links at the end too. Um, probably that export and share reports would be the most helpful kind of based on the questions that came up today. So um, just adding that and I'll add my email. I owe you this. a few more links too. So I need to get a couple more over to you. Perfect. We will uh, we'll update this a little bit more and then and then send it around. But awesome. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Patelli, for putting this on. Um, hopefully, it doesn't seem quite as scary <laughs> now. And and if you set up Google Tag Manager, it proves to be uh, pretty manageable. So, well, it was a huge amount of information <laughs> and very helpful. I, I found <laughs> I'm an accidental techie, so if I could understand what you were saying, that means you were doing something right. So, <laughs> awesome. Um, I do appreciate all of this work. It's it was very helpful for me. I hope um, that everyone that attended found it helpful. And if um, you would like to see further information on Google Analytics 4, please put that in the survey at the end as you exit. And other than that, unless we see more questions, we're going to let everyone get back to their day.